So in today's video, I want to look at a legendary haunted item, and that is the Dybbuk box. Okay, the Dybbuk box is allegedly one of the most haunted items in the world. Here's a picture of it. That's how it looks. And I mean, in a nutshell, it is just quotation marks, an antique wine cabinet or liquor cabinet that is claimed to be haunted by a Dybbuk, which is a concept from Judaism. And more specifically, the story goes that that Dybbuk, that demon is trapped inside this box, okay? It is inside it. You should never open it because you would release this Dybbuk and it might attach itself to you. Now, a Dybbuk is a bit of very esoteric law about a person dying uh, while not having completed their unfinished business on earth. And then that soul of that person after death attaches itself to another living person and has them finish that set business and then after that person has completed their business then they detach themselves and, and continue on into the afterlife now the dibic itself is a real piece of law there's a whole wikipedia page about it and that says as well in jewish mythology a dibic is a malicious possessing spirit believed to be the dislocated soul of a dead person it supposedly leaves the host body once it has accomplished its goal sometimes after being exorcised also interesting down here it says traditionally dibics tend to be male spirits who possessed women on the eve of their weddings typically in a you gotta read this word yourself fashion by entering the woman's genitalia which is seen in Anxi's play and this is something they're referencing up here i'll link this wikipedia down in the description as well so you can go check it out uh, yourself but in psychological literature the dibic has been described as a hysterical syndrome okay so it's it's linked to hysteria obviously psychology does not acknowledge it as literally being some kind of spirit but the dibic is a real piece of law within judaism that goes back all the way to the 16th century now that legend of the dibic box and there are many people claiming that there are several dibic boxes but again it is the idea that this dibic this spirit has been trapped inside this antique wine cabinet and that story has very much found its way into popular culture like for example there's a movie from 2012 called the possession it's been uh, produced by sam raimi i can bring up the the posters you get like it's I, I to be honest with you i haven't seen the movie but in the description it says during a yard sale a young girl comes across a dibic box and asks her father to buy it for her then becomes increasingly obsessed with the box and you can you can kind of see where this is going there's also a movie called the Dibbik, which is an Indian Hindi language supernatural horror movie. And again, the description down here reads, a married couple falls prey to paranormal activities after the wife brings home an antique Jewish box. So you can see movies have been made about it and it has really arrived in the center of pop culture. Many people know about it. And a big reason for that is that it is also a core piece of a collection of haunted items. And it is displayed in a specific museum that is all about haunted items which is owned by a famous paranormal show host all right you probably know who i'm talking about but i mean that show host and and within his show even built like a whole four hour live halloween tv special around opening that box and that is a reoccurring a theme on that show that it's all about opening the box in 2017 post malone for example collaborated with that paranormal show that i'm talking about and in that episode where he was a guest he touched the dibic box and then later claimed that loads of bad things happened to him and that he's convinced that that was due to him touching the box now this specific dibic box that i'm talking about here was originally purchased in 2001 by a man called kevin manis who is a furniture refurbisher and i think he bought it in order to add it to his collection, maybe refurbish it and sell it because it is a nice looking cabinet. But he's also a professional writer and he purchased it in an estate sale. And that same person, Kevin Manis, then came up with an elaborate story about the box being haunted, containing a Dybbuk. As, as far as my research goes, he even carved messages or like letters into the back of the box to increase the credibility of that story. And he did all that to increase the resale value and he then put it on eBay. The story that he came up with, and I'll link again another article about the Dybbuk box down in the description. You can check it out at full length, but in a very, very short summarization. Basically, he said that there was this 103-year-old woman who sold the box to him, who escaped Nazi Germany, while the rest of her family, they were all killed 
And then somehow he met her granddaughter or something, which is weird already. Like if every if all of her family got killed in, in the Third Reich, how come there's a granddaughter? So there are already a few gaps in that story. However, that granddaughter that he then met told him to never open this box because it contains the big. So he came up with this story in order to increase the value of this box because he wanted to resell it on eBay. And there is even a confession post from the man himself on Facebook, and I'm going to read it to you. Uh, so here it is. Kevin Manis on October 24th, 2015 said, keep in mind, he purchased the box originally, that's what I could find out, in 2001. And then a lot of stuff went down. This mystery started. You'll see in a second where it goes. But then in 2015, he came forward and said, I have to call BS on the episode Haunt Me did at a Mexico high school with a supposed Dybbuk box. The setup and definition of a Dybbuk box was entirely false and erroneous. And the claim that the box being 7 set had a so-called 5th level demon was also a bunch of hogwash. I am uniquely qualified to make these claims as I am the original creator of the story of the Dybbuk box, which appeared as one of my eBay posts back in 2003. So again, he purchased it 2001 originally at this estate sale and then... He came up with a story and tried to sell it or sold it 2003 on eBay with that story. The idea that Dybbuk boxes have some kind of history prior to my story and the idea that a Dybbuk box could contain anything other than a Dybbuk along with any deviation to the type of contents I created to be found inside a Dybbuk box is laughable at best. How about this? If you or anyone else can find any reference to a Dybbuk box anywhere in history prior to my eBay post, I'll pay you $100,000 and tattoo your name on my forehead. Bottom line, I applaud your reference to my work, but use your own creativity to come up with something for your show and leave my practice of Kabbalah and my intellectual property alone. So here he is openly admitting and confessing that he wrote the whole thing. He came up with the story. He basically made it up. Now, back in 2003, when he put it on eBay, the eBay auction was won by a Missouri student named Iosif Nischke. And I'm, I'm trying to read the name correctly. He paid $140 for it at the time. So that's not even a lot, right, for the legendary Dybbuk box. But at that time, it had not accumulated that legend yet. It was not yet that big, most haunted item. He just bought it with that fun story that that guy invented underneath. Afterwards, he claimed that the box did all kinds of horrible things to him, right? And then Nieske relisted the box on eBay eight months later after purchasing it. The winning bidder of that auction was Jason Haxton. And he's the museum director of the Museum of Osteopathic Medicine at AT Still University in Missouri. In an interview that Haxton gave in 2012, we found out that Haxton learned about the box through one of his students, the roommate of Josef Nieske, the same guy. So he learned about the box from a roommate of that guy who originally bought it. Haxton eventually purchased the Dybbuk box and wrote a book detailing all the Hollywood horror style experiences he claimed to have happened to him with bleeding from his eyes, choking on water, full body wells and hives and so on. Okay, so there is a book that this guy, Jason Haxton, wrote about his experience with the Dybbuk box. And, it, and, and, and I just find, I just want to pause there for a second because I find this super fascinating. So here's a guy, he gets this box basically for his furniture refurbishing business. He wants to make it neat and, and then he probably realizes, well, it might not be as valuable as I thought it would be. Maybe I just come up with the story probably more as a hobby, you know, as, as a fun writing exercise than anything else. The other guy buys it, claims that all this stuff happens. Then this museum director almost sees the opportunity. And I, I'm, again, this is just my interpretation of what's going on here, okay? I'm not saying that's exactly what happened, but like he seems to have seen the opportunity in it, bought the box, and then wrote this whole book about it, which furthered the infamous reputation of the box, right? So now this box with the story that this guy originally came up with has like a whole book written about it and all these, as they describe it here, Hollywood horror style kind of stories that he experienced while owning this box. And then later on, Haxton donated the box to the museum that it can be found in now. But here's what's interesting about it, okay? As we've just seen, this Facebook post, this confession post that Kevin Manis, the originator of the story, made came out in 2015. 
Now we all know that it was featured in various paranormal shows. And as far as I could research, those shows really just started to double down on the Dybbuk box, making episodes about it, telling the stories, starting in 2016. All right, so that means the legend of the Dybbuk box and its exploitation in the paranormal reality TV world started after this guy already confessed that it's a fake that he made the story up. But it seems to me like these people who are responsible for these kinds of paranormal reality TV shows don't really care about that too much, right? They are just like, oh, that's a great story, really scary stuff. Yeah, let's not talk about the guy who created it admitting that it's basically a fake. Let's build the drama around it, exhibit it, tell the stories and just cash in, write another book about it or something. So once again, it puts the credibility and actual interest in finding answers about the world of the paranormal and life after death or whatever. It just puts all of that in question once again. However, it is not only the world of paranormal reality TV. If you nowadays go to eBay and type in Dybbuk Box, you find plenty of entries and people trying to sell you a Dybbuk box, okay? Here's one Dybbuk box, do not open, extremely haunted, 70 bucks, okay? You get this extremely haunted, extremely rare item for $70, just don't open it, okay? Dark Entity Spirit Dybbuk box, this one is 410 pounds, that's not cheap. Haunted box, paranormal, with positive energy, okay? But that's only 35 pounds. If you want the positive energy, that comes fairly cheap, you want the bad one, Starts at 70. 70 bucks. Dybbuk box. Do not open. Extremely haunted. Here's another one. Look, they've got a little, what is that? Like a wooden golem stuck to it. That one comes from the US. 400, basically 500 pounds plus tax. Let's check that one out. Maybe I should buy it and then open it live on stream. So the legend continues. More and more people try to cash in on the legend of the Dybbuk box. And down here, you can see the item description from the seller. And it says, found in Eastern Europe in heritage of a distant relative decades ago. I originally thought this was some kind of vintage toy, but not daring to open it. I realized this item belongs to a completely different category, contains several items, judging by the sound. Contents thus remain a mystery. We don't know what it is. It might be pieces of gold. It might be a lot of wealth in that box if you dare to open it. Seems to cause anxiety, restlessness, nervousness, and even insomnia in me when I left it in the same room. It is possible that it contains dark, perhaps even evil entity that seems to be bound to locked inside provided by the accident effects of the experience. Okay, so people continue to make up stories around this stuff and try to cash in on it. I mean, this box is $650. If we can believe eBay, 27 people viewed it in the last 24 hours. So not sure it's gonna sell for $650. You know what, let's check out for how much these Dybbuk boxes actually sell. So to be honest with you, looking through these completed listings on eBay, I can't find a single Dybbuk box that actually has sold. I don't know if this search function is haunted or something and just doesn't show me the sold ones, but they all say there's one available. None of them have been sold. And I already clicked, you know, that it should only show me uh, the completed, the completed listings. So I don't know if these boxes actually sell, but people are certainly trying to cash in on the legend of the Dybbuk box and trying to sell you old antique wine and liquor cabinets for way inflated prices. So guys, that's basically it. That's the legend of the hoax of the Dybbuk box. The whole thing is just a scam that someone made up as it is so often, but that's just my take. That's what came out of my research. Maybe you disagree, okay? And if you do, feel free to share your thoughts and your differing opinion down in the comment section below. I'm curious to hear it. I'm curious to hear your argument. Maybe you own a Dybbuk box or something similar and you want to share your experience. I'm not going to judge you, okay? I'm not going to pretend that whatever you claim in the comments is not real. I'm curious to hear it. I want to read your story, so please leave them in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, smash the like button if you learned something. Subscribe to the channel. I would love to see you in another video. You can also join our Discord, okay? It's a lovely community if you want to talk about haunted boxes, politics, video games. It's a broad range of topics that we're discussing over on our Discord. The link to that is in the description. Thanks so much for your time. I appreciate you being here. And I hope to see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves. And I'm out. Bye.